Hey, how you doing? I'm Steve. Welcome to my channel. If this is your first time here. Thanks for checking it out. If you've been here before, thanks for coming back. Let's talk about music. So lately I've been thinking about the bands, the songs, and the musicians that inspired me when I was a kid uh, to even want to get into music at all. And if you're a musician like me, there was someone at some point or something, some song or something that inspired you to pick up your instrument. And it's, you know, it could just have been a feeling or you could have loved their antics, loved the way they played, something like that. And for me, there were three guitar players that inspired me to pick it up the guitar in the first place. And the first one of those was Ace Frehley. Now, if you don't know who Ace Frehley is, you must have been living on the rock for the last 50 years. Ace is the original lead guitar player for the legendary rock band Kiss. So Ace was born April 27, 1951 in the Bronx, New York. His dad, Carl, was a Dutch immigrant. His mom, Esther, was from North Carolina. He had two siblings, uh, Nancy, his sister and his brother Charles. They are what well, they were a very musical family. Both the parents played piano. Nancy and Charles both played acoustic guitar and piano. So it's real not a, not a surprise that Ace picked something up. He was around it all the time. He was growing up in the Bronx, and his parents didn't have a lot of money. So as it happens a lot, he started running with street gangs. Now one of the gangs that he ran with in New York were called the Duckies or the ducky boys gang and he was in that gang with a guy named Stephen edward duran who was later known as blackie lawless and he became the front man for the heavy metal band wasp kind of interesting that's where he got his nickname ace so his buddies he they would come to him because he had a knack for helping them get dates and uh, every time he'd get him a date, they'd say, you're the ace, and it stuck. That's where he got his nickname. So Ace was pretty rebellious as a youth, and he got kicked out of a couple high schools, and he dropped out of the third. Didn't look like he was going to graduate, but his parents and, and his girlfriend at the time encouraged him to go back, and he did go back to the third school and finally got his diploma. So he did graduate high school. While he was in school, he showed an aptitude for art, and a school counselor noticed it and suggested that he should put his focus on that. But Ace wasn't having it. He wanted to play music. So Ace started learning how to play guitar at the age of 13 after he got his first electric guitar at, uh, for a Christmas present in 1964. Never took any formal lessons. He taught himself by listening to Hendrix or Albert Lee, Buddy Guy, Jeff Beck, the Stone Zeppelin, uh, Pete Townsend, his favorite guitar player. So the Who was real important to him. So he developed his style from all of these different phenomenal players. Ace decided he wanted to start playing music as a career after he saw Mitch Ryder in the Detroit Wheels with the Who and Cream. Now, I have to admit, I had no idea who Mitch Ryder and the Detroit Wheels were until I started looking into Ace's past. But I did find out that they had a hit song, one I recognized, Devil with a Blue Dress. I had no idea it was them. So they must have been a big deal at the time because they were opening, or uh, the Who and Cream were opening for them, which is kind of amazing to me. Now, a side note, Ace got the opportunity to work as a road tech for the drummer for Jimi Hendrix, uh, which turned out to be his last performance in New York City before he died. Now, think about how cool that is. He got to work as the as a tech backstage while one of his heroes is up there playing and you get to see it that close up close and personal. I mean, what a freaking opportunity. That's so cool. Now Ace played with several bar bands prior to meeting kiss. He played with a band called exterminators, a band called Four roses, another one called magic people and several others. His first recording experience was with a band called Malemo in 1972. They had a record contract with RCA and they went in and recorded several songs, but the songs never were released, which I think is a bummer. I'd love to hear those things early, Ace Freely, with a different band than Kiss. That, that'd be freaking awesome. So during this time, Ace had to work a variety of odd jobs to make ends meet because he wasn't making any money playing music. 
Um, I found out, he, you know, most people know that he was a taxi cab driver in New York City. Uh, but I found out that he was at one point a uh, liquor store delivery boy, which I thought was kind of interesting. I was wondering if maybe that's where he got the idea for cold gin, you know, some lonely guy hanging out in the apartment, pining over the woman that just left him, pick up the phone or up some, you know, some gin. Yeah. Uh, who knows? Could be. Maybe. Anyway, in January 1973, his buddy saw an ad in the Village Voice for a band looking for a guitarist with, quote, flash and balls. So his buddy pushed him, and, and he decided that he'd go and audition for the band. The band's name was Wicked Lester. Now, he walked in, and there was another guitarist that was in the middle of his audition. Ace, uh, Ace of course, drew attention to himself because he was wearing one red shoe and one orange shoe. first song that Ace jammed on with Wicked Lester was Deuce. They really liked what he was doing, and about a week later, they asked him to be their lead guitar player. The next thing that happened was Paul Stanley came up with a new name for the band, Kiss, and Ace, with his artistic prowess, designed the logo. Now, these four guys, they didn't want to be an ordinary rock band. They wanted to be something special, something so outrageous that the first time you saw them, you had no choice but to remember their name. They were impressed with this band called the New York Dolls, a punk band out of out of New York that was known for wearing women's clothes, long hair, ma women's makeup, and uh, and high heel shoes. So they decided to adopt that format for themselves. Yeah, they they stole the idea, but they took it to the next level. They did a lot of experimentation and they came up with their own personas that would be unique to each of them. So they all did their own thing, and Ace came up with the Spaceman, or Space Ace. In September of 1973, they met Bill Coin, who really liked what they were doing and wanted to produce them. He started paying them weekly. Now, I've read two different amounts. I've read $50 or read $75, but they were getting each $50 to $75 a week in a salary. So... Ace is now a paid musician. He quit his other jobs. This is all he was doing. So immediately they started working on their first album, and uh, they finally released that in February of 74. So it wasn't that long. It didn't take them very long to record it. And it sold around 75,000 copies with no single uh, on the first release, which is pretty crazy if you think about it because there's no airplay. There's no single. So this is all word of mouth. So they were really making an impact pretty quick. Another side note, if you've seen the first album cover, you'll notice that Ace has silver hair. Now, he thought that'd be really cool in the photo shoot, so he went and got himself a can of silver spray paint and spray painted his hair. What he didn't realize was it wasn't going to wash out. So it took several weeks before his hair went back to the normal color. So as I already mentioned, the first song that Ace wrote for Kiss was Cold Gin. Now, he wouldn't sing it. He just... He, didn't have confidence in his voice and he just said no and so gene sang it um and for a long time ace just flatly refused he wouldn't sing anything he also wrote several other songs for the band during this time parasite strange ways getaway he wrote the intro to rock bottom all of these he refused to sing because he just didn't like his voice so everybody else sang these songs, but he didn't. Now, this didn't change until he wrote Shock Me, which was on the Love Gun album. This turned out to be a fan favorite song. It's one of my favorites. So he would use it in live concerts. He'd use it for his solo song. And he came up with the idea that he would light his guitar on fire. Obviously, in homage to the late Jimi Hendrix. He was known to have done that on stage as well. But he was going to take it to the next level. Initially, he strapped bottle rockets on the back of the neck of the guitar, and he'd put a smoke bomb inside the guitar, and he'd light him himself with a match or a lighter. But this was destroying the inside of the guitar, so they came up with the smoking pickup. Now, to kick this off, he ran a second cable to it, and a roadie backstage would kick it off when he wanted it. This was working, but it wasn't working the way he wanted so they came up with a battery powered one then ace could kick it off himself the next thing they would do is add a 
a hook to the back of the headstock of the guitar. And so then what would happen is they'd lift the guitar up into the rafters and he'd take another guitar and he'd launch rockets at it to shoot it down. Another side note, the original rocket guitar was supposed to have lasers outfitted on it and then the things would, wherever he would point it, it would cause things to blow up on the, on the stage. Now he was designing this with the, the tech that did the laser light show for Blue Oyster Cult, but they decided not to do it because someone got blinded at a Blue Oyster Cult concert from the lasers, so Ace decided he didn't want to take the chance. So they went with rockets. Either way, as a kid, seeing this stuff for the first time, it's freaking awesome. You're watching these guys do stuff that nobody does. They're blowing their stuff up on stage. Here's Ace, lights his guitar, and it goes up in the rafters, and he's shooting it down with rockets. It's so freaking cool. It's still freaking cool to see that. With their elaborate costumes and their face paint, explosive live shows, Kiss took over the world. Ace's distinctive style and unique stage presence became an integral part of the band's success. His catchy solos on all of his songs, Shock Me, Cold Gin, Rocket Ride, they leave a young guy mesmerized listening to this and watching this guy play. It was so awesome and still captivating today just watching that. As Ace's career flourished with Kiss, they started looking at options for solo stuff and they did their solo albums in 1978 he released his called ace fraley and it showcased his songwriting abilities on songs like rip it out snow blind speeding back my baby fractured mirror he his his was heavier than everyone else's they had some good stuff and it did show what they were into. Like Gene has his thing. He did some odd stuff on there. Like who would ever think Gene Simmons would sing uh, when you wish upon a star, but Hey, whatever Ace had his, but his was heavier and it seemed to hold up better. Paul's was a little more kissy like kiss and, and uh, Peter's was a 50 sixties thing. Uh, it was just, it was just different. And I, I would, argue that aces was the best of the bunch he had new york groove which everyone knows that song is most recognizable of all the solo albums still is today one of my favorites on that album is fractured mirror it's an instrumental uh, composition and it it starts very pretty and quiet it's it's a pretty song anyway and it just gradually builds and things stack on top and it's just so cool my favorite really jeff beck was a huge influence on ace as well and on the truth album there's a song called beck's bolero that beck co-wrote with jimmy page who's another guitar hero of aces ace dug it so much that when it was time to do the solo albums he wanted to put an instrumental song on there because he thought he liked it so much and that's where the idea for fractured mirror came from in spite of all the success Ace had, had had with Kiss, he was struggling with some personal issues. He had substance abuse issues, and he was getting in the way of the band. He would blow off uh, recording sessions. They'd have to bring in session musicians to cover for him, and it was just hard, causing a big riff. Um, but in spite of that, he kept writing songs, and they were kept going on the albums. Now, in May of 1980, Peter uh, was fired by Gene and Paul because he was... Uh, having his own issues and they'd had enough so now it made it two versus one and they almost always overrode ace in just about everything um, just made the riff even bigger because ace was always on the outs they brought back in bob ezrin who is the producer for uh, the destroy album which is a great album but ace and ezrin didn't get along at all they didn't see eye to eye and uh, they would They'd bicker and Ezrin would cut his leads and, and different things. They were doing the music uh, from the elder and Ace thought that was a mistake. He thought they should be doing a heavier album. Paul and Gene did not agree. Um, so they went forward with it and it turns out hindsight, Ace was right, uh, is arguably their worst album ever. It just, I don't know where they were going with that concept, why they decided to go that way. It, it just didn't work. But they put the album out 
and uh, Bob Asburn was cutting Ace's leads in places, and and of course Ace is already struggling with his substance abuse, so it was not a good time for anybody. During the Creatures of the Night sessions in 1982, Ace was in a really bad car accident, and that was the catalyst. It depends on who you talk to. Either he quit or he was fired. Either way, Ace was no longer in the band, and now Kiss, well, Kiss wasn't going to be the same band. It couldn't be. Ace was too integral a part to the band for it to continue. So they parted ways in November of 1982. But this didn't stop Ace. He formed a new band and uh, tried to move forward with it. Unfortunately, his substance abuse issues were still still in the forefront, and he was in a really bad car accident, almost killed him in 83. He recovered from it, fortunately, and he actually wrote a song about it called Rock Soldiers that shows up on the first album of the new band, Fraley's Comet. Now, Fraley's Comet continued to tour and produce albums with some modest success in the charts. However, struggles with personnel and, at the time, still dealing with his, his, uh, his addictions and stuff, uh, that caused them to have some problems and they lost their record deal by 1990. This didn't deter Ace. This is all he wanted to do. So he kept playing and Fraley's Comet continued to tour. And then in 1985, 1995, he and Peter Chris started the Bad Boys tour, and Peter's band, it was called Chris, they opened for Ace's band. Prior to this, in 1993, Kiss was inducted into the Hollywood Rock Walk of Fame, but they refused to let Ace walk with them. They told him that if Ace shows, they're going to boycott the whole ceremony, so Ace wasn't allowed to be there. Obviously, there was some still there was some strong bad blood that was going on between them, but in, eight, in 95... Ace was inducted by himself, so he still got into the, the Hall of Fame there. Funny thing is, is, later that year, Gene and Paul invited both him and Peter to come on to the MTV Unplugged show and perform with them. So they did, and on February 28th, 1996, the band appeared on the Grammy Awards in full makeup and costume, and they received a standing ovation. That, that must have been it that's when they decided they were doing the reunion tour. So April 20, or I'm sorry, April 16th of that year at a press conference on the USS Intrepid, they announced that they were doing a reunion tour. They toured from 96 to 2001. And when the tour was over, they recorded the album Psycho Circus. On that album, Ace only contributed one song called Into the Void. And it was only on the US release. And Peter sang it. And that's the only one that either one of them that were on. When this was all over, something happened. Who knows why he left? Uh, obviously, there was still some bad blood that was going on. Uh, Ace left the band, and that was pretty much the last of him being with Kiss. It's too bad I saw that tour. It was a great tour. A lot of people enjoyed it. I did. It was awesome to see them all together again, but it's just not going to work. It's too bad they got in their ways, but even today, the relationships are still strained. It's, it's too bad. Ace says that he's been, in, 19, in 2020, he said that he had been sober for 14 years. So I, I looked, I can't find anything that says anything about it now. I saw him a couple of years ago. He looked good, played great. So I hope it's, I hope it's true. I hope he's still sober and because and, he's killing it still. Ace's influence on rock music didn't stop with Kiss. He still puts out solo albums and they are rocking. In 2014, he released Space Invader, which debuted at number nine on the Billboard charts. And then he followed it up with uh, the release of Origins in 2016 and the Origins Volume 2 in 2020. They're collections of cover songs that influenced him, and they have some fantastic players playing with him on those albums. If you have not checked them out, you need to. They're, they're great. Now, he's right now, he's working on a new studio album. It's 2023, it's supposed to be out any time. I haven't heard any release date, but I'm looking forward to it. On a personal side, Ace got married to Jeanette, uh, his wife, May 10th, 1976, and they have one daughter, Monique. She was born in 1980. Apparently, they never divorced, but they're no longer together. So Ace has never married anybody else. His brother, Charles, 
he actually was a professional musician for a little while and he had some modest success, but nothing, nothing like what Ace had. Not only is he an accomplished musician, but Ace is now an accomplished painter. That's right. His art teacher was right. He now is being recognized for his artistic ability. He's got paintings that people are recognizing and they're saying has got some unique styling to it. So it's pretty cool. This guy is a real renaissance man and he's not stopping. So now you know who Ace really is, from his electrifying guitar work to his larger-than-life stage presence. And in his artwork, he's made major contributions to music, to the art world in general. And he's not going anywhere. He's going to continue to influence young players and old players alike for a long time to come. If you've got kids, I encourage you, introduce them to KISS. Introduce them to their music, to their stage presence to the show that they are. Introduce them to Ace for these music. This stuff is is timeless, really. You know, I mean, if you're a KISS fan, you still love KISS. And Ace Freely was was the beginning of KISS. And it, it's a great thing to share with your kids. Share that love. They've got to have, you know, they've got to have a love for things other than just what's popular now. There's so much to get from the old music and from new rock music that they don't even know about, that we've got to share this. And this is a bond that you can build with your kids where they can build that same love. I've done it with my own kids. I've shared this, uh, this music and we've gone to concerts together and it's a great bonding time. And it's, I've got a, my daughter, Emmy, she's my concert buddy. We can go to these kind of concerts and we'll always love it. And we'll have a great time together. And we'll be able to do that until the day I die. And that's the cool thing about music. So share this with your kids. If, if you got them, share it. Now for the new bands that are keeping rock alive, you need to check out Crazy Licks, L-I-X-X. -X. They're a band out of Sweden. They've been together since 2007. They've got a bunch of albums out. Their music's reminiscent of the 80s and 90s with an updated sound. They are, um, they're really great. They've got great songs. The uh, riffs are rocking, screaming leads. Their vocals are just outstanding. And they've got this massive big harmony. I think you'll enjoy them. 2001, or I'm sorry, 2021 was their last release. It was Street Lethal. There's a song on there called Rise Above I really like. And I think, I think you'll enjoy too. So check it out. And let me know in the comments uh, what you thought. So thanks for checking out the video. Thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. Come back next time. Let me know in the comments if you enjoyed it, if you like this kind of thing, and I'll, I'll do more of them. Uh, until next time, no matter what they say, rock's not dead. Take care. See ya.